you probably clicked on this video to get a better understanding of the Paolo Dybala situation at Juventus. You maybe clicked the link just to add more fuel to that Dybala discussion you cannot get out of. In any case, here are my objective thoughts on Paolo Dybala and his current run of bad form. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Roman. This is UV Therapy, of course. And remember subscribing to this channel and comment below about your thoughts on Paolo Dybala. I will be listing the positive things and the negative things about Paolo Dybala and the current situation. And it really is entirely up to you guys to make an opinion and what you think about this situation. If you do agree, if you don't agree, that's fine. Comment below and we'll have the discussion there. Now, before I start, I just want to let you know that I am not a delusional Paolo Dybala fanboy, like some people make me out to be. Uh, this video is as objective as I can possibly be. So let's begin. First off, let's get the facts straight. Uh, Paolo Dybala will be 27 on the 50th of November. 234 games, 96 goals, 38 assists. In my head, that sounds quite okay. That sounds, well, more than okay, actually. Last season, dominated by COVID, 11 goals, 11 assists in Serie A topped the whole thing with winning the MVP award and do not forget guys do not forget his 17-18 season where he scored 22 in Serie A and had an insane start to that season 10 goals in six matches so don't forget that one but he bailed us out against Lokomotiv Moscow last season in the Champions League with two goals in the second half and I was at that game so believe me when I tell you this those goals were exceptional scored four in a row after our lockdown in March, uh, April and May. And this should not be taken lightly because you know how many teams struggled after the COVID lockdown. But Paolo Dybala was very much present. So basically that means that we know what he can do. We know about his qualities. We know what he can do on the pitch for Juve. Now let's fast forward to the present day and in the crucial moments of the game he fails unfortunately to deliver when most needed. Struggled against Hellas Verona up until they started to sit deep and actually allowed us, him, to play. Against Spezia was anonymous and made several dodgy dodgy decisions. And of course when he lost the ball in the crucial crucial period of the game against Lazio uh, when they of course tied 1-1 only seconds later and to me it looks like he struggles with the whole thing not only physically but mentally as well so that's a negative for me he is out of form and does not perform once asked to by Pirlo because once Pirlo subs him on he expects a performance right it's not just to gain match fitness now guys, this is very interesting because uh, as soon as the player arrives at Juve, we need to back the guy no matter what, because this is a Juventus player. But as the time passes, you start to make your own assumptions and you make your, your own ideas and you make your own bubble, maybe even agendas, as to should this player be a Juve player or should we just sell him? For one, no good comes of bashing Paolo Dybala and demanding his departure now. Uh, when a player arrives, we always welcome him with open arms, but as soon as he makes a vital mistake, he is to be burned at the stake. No grey area whatsoever. But here is the thing though, if a player makes the same mistake consistently over the course of the season, there must be then a doubt to his actual ability as a footballer. Then there is an inconsistency of quality, meaning he has the quality but doesn't show it all the time, which means there is a mental issue to the whole thing. This, in my opinion, is the case with Paolo Dybala right now. It's all in his head. If the quality simply isn't there, we need to replace him with better quality. But my man has the quality. He just needs to dig it up. And being a footballer is brutal, my friends. Uh, there is no time for you to adjust and to learn new traits over the course of the season. Either you deliver today or you are gone. That's just the way it is. That's what the fans demand because we have no patience. We want results today. And of course, when he's playing for such a huge club as Juve, he is a very, very easy target. When you wear a number 10 shirt and is a fan favorite, the level we as fans expect from him is at a higher, much higher standard. So guys, you all know about this. The higher the demand, the bigger the drop. Fans automatically want your head because fans require you 
to save our asses every single game. Is it fair though? <sighs> yeah, I'm not so sure. Now we can also flip this coin and say that when you choose to play ball, you are vulnerable to criticism. You know this because you are a public figure. If you cannot handle the heat, move on to another place where the heat is not that crazy. The pressure is not that tough. At Juventus, you are always in a win now mode. We can always call the season's transition period or whatnot, but you know, guys, our Fino alla Fina slogan <laughs> can be translated to never give up, meaning fight until you are victorious. Some players may crumble under that pressure. Dybala might be one of those guys. Last season, we wanted to sell him. He worked and proved the club that he can actually be an asset. But this season, Maybe he is sick of being a center of attention, and this is basically the reaction. Again, if this is a weak mentality we're talking about, can we fix it? Yes, if we cannot fix it. Alvaro Morata will not always score. Alvaro Morata will not always be on form. Dybala is badly needed, as we have limited options up front. Bashing and turning on him won't help him, especially if he has issues with handling the criticism. A link up between our midfield and attack is vulnerable, as Ramsey is never ever fit and Dejan Kulusevski is a really work in progress. Dybala needs to be in that final third, but also be able to link up with another offensive midfielder. And we have no good box to box players with great offensive qualities. Both Rabiot, Betancourt, and even McKenny <laughs> are better in the midfield rather than attacking. And Kulusevski might actually be the key to. To Dybala's freedom if he plays consistently. So he will be a vital player for us because we are so, so thin up front. In any case, Dybala will be used this season. So in order to rediscover his form, he needs to fix whatever he needs fixing. Because like it or not, my friends, he will be used this season. Cristiano and Morata cannot play every game. Well, at least not Alvaro Morata. And guys, you know this, you've seen this. Uh, the way that he plays when he has low confidence is frustrating and freaking annoying. He is diving and looking for a foul and that destroys whatever we might have had going forward. And it's not the Dybala we want to see. It's not the Dybala I want to see. I saw the social media posts everywhere that people want Dybala gone. They want to sell him. Well, selling him won't solve much to be quite honest. Selling him would only give us enough money for one good player, maybe two, and in this day and age, perhaps an Awar could come instead of a Ramsey, for example. Uh, well, <laughs> due to fitness. But that leaves us again bare-boned in attack. And as I said it previously, guys, Ronaldo and Morata, that's all we've got. And if fans are screaming for his departure now, what they actually mean, what I really hope they mean, is that they don't want to see him on the pitch. That means Again, no offensive flexibility. Morata and Cristiano Ronaldo will play every single game. And when Dybala is needed, well, <laughs> he is subbed on, out of form of course, because he hasn't played so much. And this is important, and more likely to make a mistake, because he is out of form and has low confidence. On the basis of Cristiano Ronaldo's arrival, the bar is set much higher now for players to demand a wage increase. Dybala, according to reports, wants the half of what Cristiano Ronaldo is earning right now. The demand comes at a delicate time since he has been injured uh, since the end of the last season and in order to make that kind of money, you need to prove that you deserve that. So far, nothing. And I sincerely hope he is not playing crap just because he wasn't allowed to sign a new contract with higher wages. If the performance is only money motivated, then he is no good for us. Pay me 15 million first, and then I'll play well. <laughs> we must not forget what time we are living in right now. Of course, it's easy to forget that. It's easy to think that those guys that are trade professionals, they earn billions and billions and they should not be affected. Well, you know what? Unfortunately, they are. You know this. Cristiano was uh, infected with COVID, so was Dybala. And if an employee, never mind footballer, an employee struggles with whatever happened during the 2020, it's only fair to back him up. He is not a machine who can find the switch, find the motivation out of every single thing. He is not 
Cristiano Ronaldo, and I will come back to that. Sarri was replaced by Andrea Pirlo, no fans in the stadium, a different style of play, new players around him, but the same key position remains, he needs to deliver every time. Fair? And to finish off, yes, let's compare him to Cristiano Ronaldo. Should we though? Is it fair? I'm not so sure. Cristiano Ronaldo is a different, different animal. The guy scores at will and has insane attributes, both well, physically and of course mentally. However, Paolo Dybala is treated as if he was at the same level as Cristiano Ronaldo. You can demand that from Ronaldo because usually that's what you will receive in return. It's easy to demand something great from, from a great player because that's what's most likely to happen. If Cristiano Ronaldo makes a mistake or, in, uh, or is in a poor run of form, people start to use his stats and his history to justify that he actually has quality. So why can't we do the same with Paolo Dybala? As I said, almost 100 goals in space of 234 games. Remember what he did for us. He might actually do that again. If not, unfortunately we will have to cut the cord. So let's see what happens. I personally believe in Paolo Dybala this season. I believe that he will turn this around and will be an asset for us. So, Paolo Dybala, the ball is in your court. Please fix whatever needs fixing. And we believe in you. So, fino alla fine, my friend. Fino alla fine. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your day. And, of course, comment below, subscribe. And we'll see you for Friday night Juve therapy session. Ciao.